Welcome back to an exciting video. And what we're gonna be talking about today is the Ibanez ZPS-3 FE tremolo system. So we're gonna talk about the Ibanez trim system. Uh, this just happens to be one of my favorite uh, trim systems on the market. And I've had a few people ask me about them and I've never really shot a video just on this one thing. So I wanted to go ahead and get this done and knocked out. Now this is uh, one of my Ibanez guitars and it does have the ZPS-3 FE system on it. And I'll explain what the FE is right here in a second. But um, I've been pretty busy lately and I haven't had a chance to really shoot a lot of videos because my daughter wanted to do a uh, film for the Knoxville Horror Film Fest. And it's, a, it's just a short film, and it's a, a very silly, overacted, over-everything horror movie about a thank you bag that comes to life and starts killing people. <laughs> so uh, it's actually a pretty funny movie, and we're submitting it to the Horror Film Fest, and I've been working my ass off on that, getting that done. But in light of that, so you all see what's been going on, I am going to show a little clip from the middle. This is mine and my wife's favorite part of the film. And it was a little bit, it was a little tricky getting that bag to exit the elevator um, the way that it, I needed it to do that. So um, enjoy this little clip of the film and I'll be right back. Andy? Hey, where's your car? No! <laughs> All right, so that is what I have been doing. So hence, uh, you know, my absence away from the channel because, um, well, let's just face it. That's my daughter and my daughter comes first. <laughs> so that had to be taken care of. So now that we got that done and we've got it submitted off to the Horror Film Fest, um, once we get the new channel set up, we will be putting the entire thing on the channel with other films that we are working on that will be going up there also. So keep in mind for that. And I will post links once all that stuff gets up. <clears throat> Moving on, so we're going to talk about the Ibanez uh, ZPS FE3 trim system, which just happens to be one of my favorite trim systems in the world. I love the Ibanez Tremlos simply because they lay incredibly flat, as you can see here. And as opposed to the uh, Floyd Roses that really kick up right here in the back, and because of the way that I play, my hand hits that little fin that kicks up. So that's one of the reasons why I kind of went over to the Albanese guitars, because I've always been a big fan of the Tremolo system. And it just took me a while to finally buy an Ibanez because they were so different from the Wolfgangs I've been playing for 20 years. And once I got over to the Ibanezes and I kind of started finding the guitars that gelled with me, I gotta be honest, I never really kind of looked back. Um, I love my Ibanez guitars. And um, I do love my Wolfgangs and I still play them and every show I go to, I always have um, one of my Wolfgangs with me, every one. Cause there's certain things you just, I don't care what you play, there's certain songs you have to have a Wolfgang on. And uh, cause as far as volume control, I don't think there's any guitar better on the market than a Wolfgang when it comes to that. Uh, Eddie Van Halen really knew how to dial that one in, but, this is the, uh, like I said, this is the zero system that we're looking at right here. <clears throat> and as you can see, the Tremolo, because I see a lot of people asking how this thing should be set. And the Tremolo has a very, if you look at this part here, I don't know if you can really see it in the camera, but it has a slight rise to it here. Well, the base plate, the bottom piece down here, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, 
when this is adjusted correctly, it also should have a very slight rise to it. I don't know if you can see it in the uh, camera, but it also should have a very slight rise on the rear. Now what the ZPS system is, it is the zero point system. And the premise of this entire thing was it's supposed to return back to the zero point, the neutral position, much faster and much more effective than a standard spring tremolo system as in a Floyd Rose. Now, does that work? Um, yeah, it does. That's one of the things that sold me on the Ibanez guitars is the ZPS system. A lot of Ibanezes do not come with it. A lot of people like it. A lot of people do not. I happen to love it because I am very brutal on a trim system while, when I'm playing with my band. And it's, um, I work them very hard and it's, I got to be honest. I mean, it, it stays fairly accurate. I very seldom, I may have to tune the guitar. If we're playing a three or four hour show, which unfortunately, as you know, unless you're, you know, Van Halen, uh, you play, you know, two, three, four hour shows. But during a four hour show, I may have to tune it one time. And I mean, it's just fine tuning because the system does, it does stay in tune. It is incredibly stable. So how it works, you can see here, <clears throat> This is the system and how it all plays out here. Now, I've already taken the plate off of the back. Taken, I've already taken the plate off of the back, which lines up like this. And this is what you're looking at here. And with the plate off, of course, this is what you're looking at. Now, what we've got is, let me stick a bar in so you get a better look at what, it's easier to explain it this way with the bar in. Now, the premise of this, like I said, was for it to be able to return back to its neutral position. But the other premise, the other purpose of this is supposedly, well, not supposedly, this is what they claim, that when you break a string, it will not come out of tune. That is a lie. It will come out of tune if you break a string, simply because you've adjusted the entire amount of tension uh, on the neck when a string gets broken. These six strings equal X amount of tension. When one of the strings breaks, you lose X amount of tension, which obviously is going to cause the bridge to dip back a little bit. Now, if you have a, a Floyd Rose, like what's on my EVH guitars, if you break a string, it won't come out of tune because it is already butted up against the back of the body. There's nowhere for it to go to. Uh, it only dives forward. But on a floating tremolo system, when you break a string, it will lose tuning but it doesn't lose tune as bad as a standard floating Floyd Rose does. Um, when you break a string on one of those, if you haven't done it, man, those things go out of tune bad because that uh, tremolo, tremolo will set down because of the spring system. Usually a standard Floyd Rose trim system will have two or three springs in the back. And as you can see here, this one has four springs. And I'm going to explain to you what these springs does right here in a second. But... Like I said, the premise of this was for it to snap back into center very quickly from up or down to get to its neutral position. If you break a string, stays in tune. No, it does not stay in tune whatsoever. But what it does do is when you're doing double stops on a Floyd Rose, when you hit and you do your bend, you will really see that trim system really move on a Floyd Rose it will move substantially. And what it does is when that happens, if you're doing a double stop and you're bending, let's say your B string and leaving your E straight, it will actually pull your E flat when it does that. Now the ZPS system, being that it is a much more stable system, it prevents most of that from happening. It's gonna be hard to see, like I said, but I'm gonna do a double stop here. And if you watch the bar, you see it virtually doesn't move at all. And I am bending probably a step and a half. Hang on, let me lock this in a little better. Cause it'll be easier to look at the bar than look at the trim system. Here, now watch the bar. Now I'm gonna do about a step and a half bend. And you can see that bar does not move. And if it moves, it is micro, I mean, it's, it's absolute minimal. And that's a good step and a half to two step bend I'm doing there. So that is one of the things that I do love about it is when you are doing these big bends, the tremolo system will actually stay 
fairly in place because of the design of it. To where when I do that on my floored roses, you can watch the trim move up and down. So in that aspect, this is by far superior to a standard Floyd Rose setup. And I do mean by far superior. Now, how it works, if you look at the back of the guitar here, you will see you have two sets of springs and the tension wheel. Now this tension wheel, this will adjust the tension on the tremolo, which will cause it to do this. And you have to crank this thing a lot to get it to move. So be prepared for that. And it does have, you won't be able to see because it it's done in black, but it does have a little gauge right here on the back. So you can see, kind of like when you're doing a Floyd Rose, you always do everything in quarter turns and you kind of keep track of how many turns you're doing. Well, this kind of eliminates that by having this little gauge. And the little gauge, it has a little uh, plate here that you'll be able to see move inside of this gauge. So you'll know exactly where you're going, how far you've moved and all that stuff. So it's pretty cool. But how this works is when you dive down, if you look here, when you dive down, this bar right here is attached to the tremolo itself. This is essentially your block and it's pushing against this bar here. And this bar engages these two springs. So basically what's happening is you have one set of springs to dive and one, one set of strings to pull up. So when I dive down, you can see this is activating the bar. The bar will rock back into these two grooves here. And you can see it lengthening these springs here. And these springs have a different amount of, a different amount of tension than these two, uh, two springs do. These are much thicker, the ones in the middle. Now, when you go up, when you lift up, as you can see, the bar becomes disengaged. And now it's only operating on these two springs here. And it brings it back to the center, lightning fast. Well, you've got four springs on it with two different sets of tension. How does it feel? Well, actually, it feels very, very good. I love the setup of this. When you're doing a dive, it feels like a normal tremolo. It may be a little stiffer when you're pulling up. Uh, I really don't notice it too much because all my other guitars but one uh, that have a Floyd Rose, they're all sitting butted up against, which would be my EVH guitars. Uh, I have the one Ibanez that is a floater with a claw. So it is, a, it is a very stable system. And actually, I think it's a very brilliant system in the way that it works. Having the two separate springs that are only there to do one particular job, as opposed to having your springs doing both jobs of increase and decrease of tension on the tremolo itself. This one has its own set of springs for each function. And I think that's brilliant. I think that's actually a very smart move. And like I said, just the added stability, especially when you're doing a, a string bends or double stops, it will keep the string that you're double stopping, the one that should be, that is not being bent, it will keep that string in tune. To on a regular Floyd, that string will fall flat. The higher you bend the B, the more the E will fall flat. This one seems to have eliminated that, pretty, I'm gonna say 99%. Uh, and if you can hear it, it is absolutely minimal. So on that aspect alone, because I do a lot of, of double stops, um, I've got a video on doing just double stops that is on my channel. I do a tremendous amount of double stops. So to me, that is very important. Another thing I like about it, because it does have this dual spring system and the springs are substantially shorter and they only have one job to do as opposed to two jobs, this eliminates trim flutter. Now, I do know a lot of people like trim flutter. I, however, am not one of those people. And it's not that I don't like the effect of it, but sometimes when I'm playing, I have to reach up and hit and I'll hit it real quick and I just wanna let it go. Well, on a standard trim, when you do that, it's gonna flutter. This one will not, this one, it will just return back to normal with no flutter. And that's ultimately what I want because I kind of like having control over everything that's going on on my guitar. And when I've got to smack that tremolo system really quick, the amount of flutter, I don't have control over that. So what a lot of people do is they will put carbon fiber arms in to lighten it 
to eliminate the amount of flutter that you get. But on that note, what you can do, let me pull this out. Now people do get these tremolos and what they'll do is they'll make a stop bar that'll go in here to keep the tremolo from pulling backwards. That way they can work in multiple tunings. They can go to drop D if they want to do so, whatever have you. If you have this set up perfectly and you go to drop D, this kind of goes back to what I was saying about if you break a string, you're changing the tension on the neck, which ultimately is going to change the tension on your trim system through the uh, springs. So you can't take this type of trim, even as stable as this is, you cannot take this and say, hey, I'm just going to go to drop D and not expect to have to retune all the strings. You're going to have to do that. So the best thing to do is if you do a lot of songs in drop D, it's just to get another guitar if you like the system, set one up for drop D and one up for standard. That's the easy way to do it. But if you do not like that, you can put a stop bar in this and that'll lock it from pulling back. And then at that point, you're just good to go. You can just tune it whatever you want to tune it. You don't have to worry about it, nor do you have to worry about breaking strings and it coming severely out of tune. But that kind of takes the fun out of a floating tremolo system and the purpose of a floating trim system. I love floating trims because I pull up almost as much as I push down on it. And I love having that nice vibrato you get from a full floating trim, just that where it balances right there on top, up and down. That is just a, a glorious, glorious, beautiful sound. And I do like that. But if for some reason you have this guitar and you're like, I like the flutter, I don't like the feel, I don't like anything about it. Well, you can remove this and just put in a standard system. This plate is held in by screws. You can take this plate, remove it completely off and remove this entire system. And you can put two screws in and put a standard claw in if you choose to do so. This is bypassable if that's what you want to do. And you can hook it up. Actually, you can pull this out and just put a standard tremolo system in it if you want to do so. And just eliminate all together if it's a guitar you just happen to love per se you know, the thinness of the S bodies. I love the guitar, I don't like the trim system. Well, you can remove that and you can put in a standard trim system if you choose to do so. Personally, I would not do that. Personally, I love this trim system. They're very stable. They return back to zero extremely fast and that's important to me. And even on my other guitars I oh, that do not have this, I have noticed from time to time when I'm playing, if I'm doing a lot of dive bombing, when I let it go, it will come back, except for maybe like 8, 10, 15%, I mean, a sense of neutral. So what I have to do is while I'm playing, I'll have to give it a quick jerk up and to snap it back in tune. I don't seem to have that problem at all with this system. Uh, this one, as soon as I let go of the trim up or down, it goes back to its neutral position virtually every single time. And that is the beauty of this system. And what the ZPS-3 was, it was this system without the wheel. The FE is what adds the wheel to it. And I've got this on my 1070, um, my 1130 PBZ, and I have this system on my J Custom. And I absolutely love it. Because when I'm buying Ibanez guitars, Believe it or not, this is one of the things that I do look for is getting the ZPS system. I do really enjoy the system itself. So one thing real quick I want to talk about is when you're working on your guitar, make sure that you do have the right tools to work on your guitar. Now the screws on the back of this, and I've done this a thousand times and I hate the fact that I keep doing it. Uh, the screws that hold these plates on, as you can see, if you can see, they are extremely tiny and they have a little bitty Phillips heads in them. And I used to use my Mac screwdrivers, you know, they have the big fat handles. And when I would crank them in, since the handle is so big, you can apply so much more torque on it without any feeling. And I've stripped a thousand of these things out on the back of guitars. And it got to the point where I just started taking them off my guitars and leaving them off because where I would take them in and out from working on guitars, I would end up stripping it out. So what I did is I went out and I bought a precision set of screwdrivers. It has a very little shank on it. 
which means you're not going to get a tremendous amount of torque on this. And this top spins so you can hold it with one hand with pressure and you can turn it and that will rotate in your hand or you can just press it down and turn it since this top rotates and it keeps you from stripping out the screws in the back and it also keeps you because it has such a small tip from trying to put a tip too big into your Phillips head and tearing that up as well. So having right tools for the job is the thing to do, but just in case you end up stripping one of these out, a good way to fix this is get a toothpick and get a very sharp knife and shave just a little bit. I mean a shaving of wood off of it. Take that little piece of wood and get um, uh, a nice little pick if you've got a good set of tools stick it into the hole let me flip this up i don't know if you can see the holes here but stick it into the hole as deep as you can and then thread your screw back in and that will get rid of this uh the uh, wooden thing the uh, wooden hole being stripped out if it happens on this because i've stripped these out also here what i do here is i just get a toothpick i'll break about so much off of it we'll say eighth inch maybe a little more and i will just cut it in half stick the entire half in there thread it in and that eliminates it being stripped so you don't want to start sticking glue and stuff into these holes you never want to do that you always want to look for a better workaround that makes it easier to facilitate and sticking a little piece of toothpick wood in there it will solve the problem every single time, guaranteed, and you won't have any problems with it being stripped out. Because I guarantee if you're watching this video, somewhere on your guitar is a stripped out screw. I guarantee it. And this will eliminate that. So I just wanted to do a quick video um, about the ZPS-3 FE system by Ibanez. It is a fantastic system. It is incredibly stable. And if it's one of these things, if you've never played one, you might want to give it a try before you write it off. Because I do know a lot of people just end up writing this uh, tremolo system off because it's just different. And they don't like the fact that it's different. And I'm the exact opposite. I love the fact that it's different. So check one out if you get a chance. I think you will really like it. And on that note, like the great Sammy Hagar says, if you miss the beat, you lose the rhythm and nothing falls into place. And for the love of God, whatever you do, rock on.